I'm going to show you this AI system that automatically extracts, analyzes, and stores all of your invoices into an organized table, laying out each invoice neatly for you. This system will get every one of your incoming emails and attachments, then store it in Google Drive and extract the data from that attachment using optimal character recognition, and then store the data into your table. Now, we're going to be using this only for invoices as our example, but hypothetically, since we are using OCR, you know, optimal character recognition, which basically just converts text from images and documents into machine readable text. If there's other types of documents and images that you need to extract and analyze and store or take actions upon, like analyzing the document and having the agent determine what action needs to happen, like sending an email or notifying a team member, then you can absolutely do that as well with the system I'm about to show you how to build. Real quick, before we get into the video, I wanted to mention if you're a business owner looking to implement AI agents and other custom AI solutions into your company to increase your bottom line and create operational leverage, check out the link below to apply to work with us and if you're looking to scale your own ai agency we have two more spots to work directly one-on-one -on -one with me so whether you want to start your own ai automation agency and land clients or automate your business yourself i'll help you achieve your goals you also get full access to my resources templates and in-depth tutorials now getting into the system and how it actually works what we have right here is an invoice that's just some dummy data that I found on the internet. So it's including a bunch of fake information. So here's the store name, the smart store, here's the address, phone number, email, website, and then it's including all these different line items, the amount of each description, quantity, and then we have down here the invoice total, invoice number, and the date that it was issued. Now what we want to do is actually store this into our table. So what I've done is I've actually turned all that information from the PDF into plain text. So now we can see that we have the total price right here we have what the invoice is for and who it's assigned to and all the other information like a smart store and then what we're also doing we have this other section where we're breaking down the line items so we have the price for each description so we have glass food storage and let's go back here and see where that is so we have glass food storage containers so the unit cost of 55 dollars and the amount is equating to 110 dollars and as you can see right here that matches that perfectly now you could also take all sorts of different actions. So if you want to notify people after something is uploaded or if there's a due date that's up and coming and you want to make sure that it's paid and everything is on track, then you can absolutely add notifications to notify whichever relevant team member. And there's really a lot of different ways that you could play around with what you're doing right here. And this doesn't just have for invoices. It could be for any other sort of document that you would like to use OCR and turn everything here into plain text. But you know, we're just going to be using invoices, as I mentioned, as our hypothetical, because I think that's going to be one of the most common use cases for a system like this. Now, breaking down this agent, we only have a few different tools and softwares that we're going to have to use. And there's only going to have to be one that you sign up for. And there is some other ones out there, but the software that I use to actually um, use the OCR in this example, which is going to analyze the image and extract all the contents of it and put it into plain text. And I'm using Llama Cloud for that, but I'll show you later how you could sign up for an account once we get to that part of the build now let's break it down one by one so first off what we have here is a gmail trigger so we want any incoming email so let's say somebody a coworker, or a contractor sends us an invoice and of course going to be sent as an attachment so what we have here we have a gmail trigger that's going to watch for any invoices or any attachments that are going to be sent so if you would like to set this up yourself all you'll do is just get a gmail trigger you go to gmail if you scroll down to the bottom you'll find triggers and on message received you know you'll just want to make sure that you're signed up or connected to your proper account but anyways simple stuff right there you'll want to make sure to download Download attachments is on. Of course, I really don't have to explain that one. But next up, what we have to do is actually filter these emails to make sure that we're only going to extract the emails that have attachments in them. So if I were to view this, we'll just see that it is the sales invoice of uh, what I was just showing off earlier. So what I did here is I said Gmail trigger and include the binary item. So feel free to copy this over. It'll just be a simple expression right there. And then the output, we are storing that into another Git message. And this is actually a little bit redundant right here. Yeah, I, I could probably do with removing this Gmail node right here. But in any case, what we're really doing with this is we have to upload it into Google Drive. So why we have to do that is because we actually have to download this PDF. And this is just one of the easiest ways to download the document that we were receiving. So as I mentioned earlier, this doesn't have to be the only trigger. So other triggers can 
be when something is maybe sent via Teams or via Slack and you want to get that attachment, that document, and you want to analyze the text of it, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about this. Or we can add another node as a trigger. So if we did Google Drive and let's open this up. If we do a trigger on changes to a specific folder or on changes involving a specific folder. So let's say in our in one of our folders in Google Drive, if anything is updated in there, a new document is created, whatever, this is going to get the system to run. So a lot of different use cases that you can go about this. Anyways, we're going to upload this attachment into Google Drive, this PDF right here. We just want to somehow get this in this folder. I have it called N8 on YouTube. I'm just using this for this particular video, but let's go back to our workflow. Now, the input data field name, it's going to be whatever the title is right here. If you have multiple attachments, then you know likely it would be attachment zero, attachment one, attachment two. You'll just have to include that in the data field name. Now for the file name, what I'm doing is I'm just including the Gmail item of the subject. Okay, so I guess in this uh, subject, I'm just saying some random letters, but you know, if I were to write a new email, I'm gonna send this off to Nick and I want the subject to be uh, hello. And then I have my invoice in there. What it's going to do is it'll just show up right there. So that's how that works. And what we resemble that with is an expression called gmail item.json.subject, as I already mentioned. And we wanted to connect this to our Google Drive account. And as I showed you, I had this in the N8N folder or N8N YouTube folder. And you can find that right here. You'll find that under the parent folder. Now, once we actually upload it to Google Drive, what I am doing is I'm just going to put all this information into an edit field to make sure that I'm able to later reference all this information pretty easily. Now, this part isn't super important, but feel free to kind of mimic the style and approach that I'm taking, I'm uploading the file ID. I get that from the uploaded to Google Drive. I get that right here, the delivered to. So if I go down to Gmail, you can see that it's delivered to this email address, but if I were to scroll, we'll find a better one that we can input, okay. We can see in this um, object right here, it says two, and here's the address. And that's where I just kind of plop that in right there. And then from, we're just doing the same thing. We're finding who it was sent from. And we can see right here, I just drag that over and email subject. It's going to be the same as the last node. We're just finding the email subject. So in this case, it was a bunch of gibberish. Now that we have that set up, we are going to actually download this file because downloading this file is what's going to allow us to pass that file into our OCR software, which is one of the most important parts of this system and kind of the backbone of everything. Now, this one's pretty simple. All we have to do is we're just going to a Google Drive. You'll find it right here. If I go to download, download file, that's essentially what this document is right here, or this node, I should say. And we're just doing a file as the resource. Operation is going to be download. You'll select from a whole list of um, different options. And I'm listing it out by ID. And what I did right here, I just grabbed the file ID and drag it over. And what you get is this output right here. As you can see, it's called data and you could view the file just as you were able to view it earlier. Now, we're going to get into the part where we're actually going to be using a external software. And as I mentioned, we're going to be using Llama Cloud. Now, Llama Cloud is just my preferred choice of OCR, but there's so many different options out there. I'll allow you to explore those for yourself, but this is what I prefer. Feel free to use this as well. First thing you wanna do is you wanna sign up for a free account on Llama Cloud. You know, you get a certain amount of credits per day. For some reason that says I have one credit today. But anyways, once you sign up for an account, as I mentioned, it's completely free. You want to go into your API keys and you want to generate a new key. So if I call this um, hi, then you know, you'll just copy this key and you'll hold on to that. So I'm actually gonna delete this because I don't want any of you guys to steal my key. Okay, now once we're in this documentation, what we're going to do is we're just going to come onto this left side. We will go to document extraction. It's still under beta, but that's perfectly fine. We will go to getting started. And if we go to using the REST API, okay, this is exactly what we're looking for. And it's pretty easy. All we have to do is just copy the curl. So if I were to, I can actually just copy this right here. So first part is going to be uploading the files. So we want to upload this document into our OCR tool. How we're going to be doing that is we're going to use an HTTP request. So if I just search up HTTP request, I'm going to input the curl that I just copied and I'm going to paste it right here. The only thing that you will have to change is inputting your API key. So what I told you earlier to hold on to, this is where you're going to be inputting that right into here. So I'm going to import and it's going to do literally everything for me, which is pretty nice. So if I wanted to, I'm going to actually use this other folder so the only thing that you will have to implement is this uh, send body it is already enabled so we have this data connected so our binary data and now all we have to do is just input data right here and then this will allow us to actually upload the file into our llama cloud so i already have everything in here you know it's the same exact thing as this node so 
going to delete this. This is just going to upload our data, as I mentioned, but we have to actually get the status of it and see, you know, of course, we're just wanting to extract what happens once it uploads into Llama Cloud. And that's where this next node comes into play. The next portion, which is going to be checking the status of the extraction job. So once again, just copy this curl. And if we go to input curl, we'll just put it right here and you'll get exactly what's right here. You will have to put in your own JSON ID, but if you grab the ID from the previous node, you'll just drag it on over, which is simple enough. So next up, what it's going to do, and maybe it's best if I show you really quick, I'm going to actually start from the beginning and I'm going to test out. I will actually have to send my myself another PDF. So I'm going to say invoice for Nick. I'm going to say here's the invoice for January contract. I'm going to send this off and it will take a second for it to be recognized in this system. So what I'm going to do, normally we could just turn this on and it'll automatically grab this and start running the scenario, but I'm going to make this very simple and break it down. So I'm just going to be testing it manually. So let's go ahead and start this trigger and let's see if it's going to run through all these nodes. We can see here that it did recognize the attachment so we can view it and everything. This is exactly what I'm sending off. Now let's actually upload it into Llama Cloud. We can see that it is uploaded properly, but we will see here that the status is pending. So once we make the call to upload this file into Llama Cloud, it will take maybe a minute or 30 seconds to actually get the information and the text from the file. So what we have here, and as it shows in here, it has to check the status. And once the status is showing success, that's when we can actually get the results. So that is what this next node is doing it's just constantly checking the status so if i run this once it may be done okay so it is showing success however when it's instantly running it's going to have to continue looping through this node so what we did is we connected this to a switch and this switch is going to tell us whether it is a success or pending you know if the status is pending which it should show pending right here because it just uploaded yeah so the status in this node is pending so if that's what it is it's just going to keep running this node and checking the status to make sure that it's done you know you could also probably just put a wait node to not have to run through this you know if you put wait right here and then you have it wait like 30 seconds then this is another alternative but you know this is what i prefer to do so that's how i'm going to run it but anyways as i showed you the output would be success and this just leads off into the next node which is the last one that we're going to have to input from llama cloud and this is just getting the results so we're going to copy this over and we're just going to put this into our new node right here and you'll just go into input curl you'll paste that again the only thing you'll have to change is your api key right here you also have to put in your json id but you know i already have that connected so i'm gonna run this and we should get this as a success yeah we can see right here from the switch node it outputted through this path because it was a success and we just connected the proper json id so we literally just dragged that over again we're inputting our api key that's really the only other thing you'll have to change now this is where you're going to get into you actually using more ai aside from the otr what i said here in this prompt is you'll be given text extracted from pdf invoices and before i actually move any further i want to show you kind of what we got from my cloud we have this data it's all in plain text essentially this entire document is just now in plain text so if i go back into the workflow we can see here you know i'm not going to read out everything here but i will read out this prompt so i said your objective is to identify and extract specific details from these invoices and organize them into a structured format the details to be extracted include and then here's kind of where i'm going on the format that i would like it to input and i'll show you kind of the result and if I just back out, we'll see this is kind of what our result looks like. So we have the content of the invoice name here, sales invoice, the company name being the smart store, total invoice amount being $411.08. Line item description, we have glass food storage, silicon reusable food storage bags, travel feet arch support insoles, and a array of different other things. You know, if you take the time to actually read this PDF or this invoice, you'll see that everything is matching up. So we'll have the smart invoice as the name name it just says sales invoice whatever we could even include more information to get the website and whatever else but I just left it kind of um, pretty uh, bare bones for the time being. But anyways, if we move on to the next node, so we have two different paths. We have this first path up at the top, and this is going to be creating this table right here. So it's going to be including the who it's from, who it's for, the assignee, so who it's sending the emails to, the invoice type. We're including a list of the line items, which can also be found right here. But we're also including the total price, the invoice category, the email content, email subject, and even a link to the invoice. I'll explain how we actually do this, but we're essentially just 
creating this category right here where it's going to list out all these different individual line items. So we have the glass food storage container. You know, I could even expand this if I would like to, something like that. But yeah, you could tailor this to whatever fits your needs of yourself and the organization. Now, up at the top, what we're doing is we're just doing another edit field. So within this first one, we're just dragging all the open AI nodes that we're going to need. So I'm including the line item description, who it's going to be for in the category. And then I'm inputting that into Airtable. So I'm inputting the from node or from category, sorry, who it's for, the assignee, invoice. All I'm really doing is I'm just dragging over um, let's see here. Well, for this one in particular, I just kind of typed out the JSON expression. So I'm typing out node, edit fields, and then who it's from. And this will give me the name right here. The reason why I had to type it out is because sometimes it doesn't allow me to go back that far within the workflow, which is something that's pretty annoying about N8N. So you will just have to type out your expression. And if you follow this format, you'll be good. So you'll just want to swap out what your node is called. Mine is called edit fields and the JSON um, item is called from right here. So you'll just want to tailor that to yourself. So if you had this called something else, like maybe Google Drive, and then your item was called hello, I don't know, something random, you kind of get the idea. Uh, for the four, we're just inputting the last node. I just drag that over right here. And then really just doing the same thing for everything else. Now, where it gets a little bit more complicated is down this bottom path. So if we want to input all of these separately and have this into our air table nice and neatly like that, what we have to use is a split node. And a split node really just allows us to separate each item. So we can see right here that we have eight different items under this array. So this array has line item zero through seven right here. So we have those eight items. And what we're doing is we're just dragging this entire line items and just putting it right here. So I don't want to have two of them. So I'm going to remove that. The only other thing you'll have to do is include all other fields. So we'll test this step and we will get something that looks like this. So here's the output. It does look pretty similar to this input right here, but I'll show you why you had to do that. So we're then going to be doing a loop because it's going to loop through each individual invoice. So as you can see, it's not listing out the total invoice or the line item description and the amount. It's only showing one item out of the eight. So we could see here that there's eight items, but it's only showing one. So each time that we want to upload this into Airtable, we have to keep iterating through that one node so that it keeps repeating until it's finished. So it has to run through this node eight different times. So if we do the loop of our items, you know, you don't have to input anything here. You just do the batch size is one and the air table right here. So you'll just hook this up how you normally would. Um, let's see here. If I go to, I'm going to run this really quick. So we're going to see it's running through eight different times and it's going to be uploaded into here as well. So it's just going to keep stacking, but we will see all I'm really doing is just hooking up the invoice. So the invoice I got from Let's see where it up, oh, I believe just right here. And the line items, I'm just dragging it over. So for the line items, what I did is drag over the description right here and the amount I just dragged over right here. And it's just gonna keep iterating until it's finished running through all those different items, which is eight in this particular example. And that's really everything that there is to this system. Again, there's so much more that you can add to it. And this is meant to be more of a foundational video showing you how you can expand and the possibilities of using OCR. If I were to prompt this, if I were to say, I need you to determine what type of um, file this is, if it's an invoice or if it's some other type of document. And if it's invoice, I want you to notify our team members. If it's some other type of form or image, I need you to send this email to this person. So, you know, pretty bad hypotheticals right there, but I think you kind of get the idea of where my head is at and the possibilities when it comes to building out these agents and these systems. So yeah, I allow this to be a more so foundational backbone and, you know, build some things on top of this. Of course, share it into my communities or in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you guys build out um, and more than happy to guide you guys into building something special if you need any help. Yeah, that's essentially it. But if you are a business owner looking to implement systems like this or other custom AI solutions, then you can apply to work with us down below in the description where we will take a bottom up approach and really increase your bottom line and create operational leverage through means of different systems. But if you're looking to scale your own AI agency, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we only have two more spots to work directly one on one with me. And you can check that out, apply to the link down below in the description. But with that being said, Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.